How much credit do you give Walmart and the team for, for beating their lowered expectations? Well, those guys are masters. You know, they've done this for a long time. Tell everybody you're going to be terrible and then come in a little less terrible and, and, uh, and you know, get kudos for it. So they managed the business really well, given where they were headed. And, uh, and you got to give them credit for that. But you say it's kind of a mixed result. Why? Yeah, I mean, there's some things to like in there. They did a good job. I mean, I, I love how they're holding pricing down to try to give the consumer some relief. But if you look in the detail, and Doug just mentioned it there in that clip, food inflation mid-teens is brutal. I mean, brutal for the consumer. Getting past that, uh, it's really all they're focused on right now. And until that eases up, uh, I worry about the overall macroeconomic uh, situation. Also, I think when you look at their inventory, about a third of their inventory, 26 percent up. Uh, about a third of that can be explained by the food inflation. But they got a lot of general merchandise product to move through in order to have a good holiday season. Uh, so I think that's a concern. And finally, for me, I'm not quite sure what to make of their guidance, their same store sales guidance for the back half of the year at 3 percent. You know, you could be optimistic and say they're they're forecasting 3 percent because food inflation is going to moderate. But if food inflation stays in the mid-teens and they're only delivering up 3% and the rest of their business is going to be struggling. Right. So that was sort of my next question, which, which is what did we learn about the consumer? The consumer's taking a beating right now, just a beating, um, particularly in the middle uh, of the economy and down uh, with food costs up the way they're up. Uh, uh, that's taken about every bit of discretionary dollar they can have, and it's forcing people into difficult decisions on, you know, food or rent, and and, and that's a brutal situation to be put in right now. Uh, some of that's offset by wages generally are up, um, and and unemployment's high, so they're getting paid, but all of it's going to food. But so Walmart is growing share in grocery, even even in this tough environment, and it's it's interesting. Kroger shares are up three and a half percent on the back of these results. Costco's up. The, the Sam's Club's numbers were good. I guess that bodes well for the, the club stores like a Costco or a BJ's. But what, what, is, what is the read-through on, on Walmart's own grocery business relative to its competitors at a time when food inflation is in the double-digit rise? Well, that's always been Walmart's strength. I mean, they're really great at uh, managing costs and, you know, able to hold their breath longer than anybody else. And you can see that in their numbers, their gross margins down. Uh, um, because they're because they're selling product, uh, they're, they're not they're absorbing some of the inflation costs, and that's causing customers to trade into Walmart. And you, you, they mentioned that as well that they're seeing even um, a substantial portion of their same store sales coming from household incomes over a hundred thousand um, dollars. So people seek Walmart in inflationary and in, in high cost periods, and they're doing a, a really good job at that. That's what they're built for.